Good day to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 20th day of April, day 111 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name is Hunter. I am your brother, your Bible reading coach, somebody who shows up with you every day to spend a little time together in the pages of the Bible. And today we're going to let the Bible do what the Bible does and direct our hearts to the one who is the living word of God, the one alone who has the words of life. And so we come from all around the world. We gather here to warm ourselves by the fires of God's love. For God is love. And today we're in the book of 1 Samuel. That's where we'll start. Chapter 23. Then we go to Psalm 31, Psalm 54. And we'll finish our reading in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7. Father, thank you. Help us to see. 1 Samuel 23. One day news came to David that the Philistines were at Kaliah, stealing grain from the threshing floor. David asked the Lord, Should I go and attack them? Yes, go and save Kaliah, the Lord told him. But David's men said, We're afraid even here in Judah. We certainly don't want to go to Kaliah to fight the whole Philistine army. So David asked the Lord again, and again the Lord replied, Go down to Kaliah, for I will help you conquer the Philistines. So David and his men went to Kaliah. They slaughtered the Philistines and took all their livestock and rescued the people of Kaliah. Now when Abiathar son of Ahimelech fled to David at Kaliah, he brought the ephod with him. Saul soon learned that David was at Kaliah. Good, he exclaimed. We've got him now. God has handed him over to me, for he has trapped himself in a walled town. So Saul mobilized his entire army to march to Kaliah to besiege David and his men. But David learned of Saul's plan and told Abiathar the priest to bring the ephod and ask the Lord what he should do. Then David prayed, O Lord God of Israel, I have heard that Saul is planning to come and destroy Kaliah because I am here. Will the leaders of Kaliah betray me to him? And will Saul actually come as I have heard? O Lord God of Israel, please tell me. And the Lord said, He will come. Will the leaders of Kaliah betray me and my men to Saul? And the Lord replied, Yes, they will betray you. So David and his men, about six hundred of them now, left Kaliah and began roaming the countryside. Word soon reached Saul that David had escaped, so he didn't go to Kaliah after all. David now stayed in the strongholds of the wilderness and in the hill country of Ziph. Saul hunted him day after day, but God didn't let Saul find him. One day near Horesh, David received the news that Saul was on the way to Ziph to search for him and kill him. Jonathan went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in his faith in God. Don't be afraid, Jonathan reassured him. My father will never find you. You're going to be the king of Israel, and I will be next to you as my father Saul is well aware. So the two men renewed their solemn pact before the Lord. Then Jonathan returned home while David stayed at Horesh. But now the men of Ziph went to Saul in Gibeah and betrayed David to him. We know where David is hiding, they said. He's in the strongholds of Horesh on the hill of Hakaliah, which is in the southern part of Jeshimon. Come down whenever you're ready, O king, and we will catch him and hand him over to you. The Lord bless you, Saul said. At last someone is concerned about me. Go and check again to be sure of where he is staying and who has seen him there, for I know that he is very crafty. Discover his hiding places and come back when you are sure. Then I'll go with you, and if he is in the area at all, I'll track him down, even if I have to search every hiding place in Judah. So the men of Ziph returned home ahead of Saul. Meanwhile, David and his men had moved into the wilderness of Moan in the Arabah Valley, south of Jeshimon. When David heard that Saul and his men were searching for him, he went even farther into the wilderness to the great rock, and he remained there in the wilderness of Moan. But Saul kept after him in the wilderness. Saul and David were now on opposite sides of the mountain. Just as Saul and his men began to close in on David and his men, an urgent message reached Saul that the Philistines were raiding Israel again. So Saul quit chasing David and returned to fight the Philistines. Ever since that time, the place where David was camping has been called the Rock of Escape. David then went to live in the strongholds of En Gedi. Psalm 31 for the choir director, a psalm of David. 
O Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me, for what you do is right. Turn your ear to listen to me. Rescue me quickly. Be my rock of protection, a fortress where I'll be safe. You are my rock and my fortress. For the honor of your name, lead me out of this danger. Pull me from the trap my enemy set for me, for I find protection in you alone. I entrust my spirit into your hand. Rescue me, Lord, for you are a faithful God. I hate those who worship worthless idols. I trust in the Lord. I will be glad and rejoice in your unfailing love, for you have seen my troubles and you care about the anguish of my soul. You have not handed me over to my enemies, but have set me in a safe place. Have mercy on me, Lord, for I am in distress. Tears blur my eyes. My body and soul are withering away. I am dying from grief. My years are shortened by sadness. Sin has drained my strength. I am wasting away from within. I am scorned by all my enemies and despised by my neighbors. Even my friends are afraid to come near me. When they see me on the street, they run the other way. I am ignored as if I were dead, as if I were a broken pot. I have heard the many rumors about me. And I am surrounded by terror. My enemies conspire against me, plotting to take my life. But I am trusting you, O Lord, saying you are my God. My future is in your hands. Rescue me from those who hunt me down relentlessly. Let your favor shine on your servant. In your unfailing love, rescue me. Don't let me be disgraced, O Lord, for I call to you for help. Let the wicked be disgraced. Let them lie silent in the grave. Silence their lips, those proud and arrogant lips that accuse the godly. How great is the goodness you have stored up for those who fear you. You lavish it on those who come to you for protection, blessing them before the watching world. You hide them in the shelter of your presence, safe from those who conspire against them. You shelter them in your presence, far from accusing tongues. Praise the Lord, for he has shown me the wonders of his unfailing love. He kept me safe when my city was under attack. In panic I cried out, I'm cut off from the Lord. But you heard my cry for mercy and answered my call for help. Love the Lord, all you godly ones, for the Lord protects those who are loyal to him. But he harshly punishes the arrogant. So be strong and courageous, all you who put your hope in the Lord. Psalm 54 For the choir director, a psalm of David regarding the time, the Ziphites came and said to Saul, We know where David is hiding, to be accompanied by stringed instruments. Come with great power, O God, and rescue me. Defend me with your might. Listen to my prayer, O God. Pay attention to my plea, for strangers are attacking me. Violent men are trying to kill me. They care nothing for God. But God is my helper. The Lord keeps me alive. May the evil plans of my enemies be turned against them. Do as you promise and put an end to them. I will sacrifice a voluntary offering to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from my troubles and helped me to triumph over my enemies. Matthew 7 Do not judge others and you will not be judged. For you will be treated as you treat others. The standard you use in judging is the standard by which you will be judged. And why worry about a speck in your friend's eye when you have a log in your own? How can you think of saying to your friend, Let me help you get rid of that speck in your eye, when you can't see past the log in your own eye, hypocrite? First get rid of the log in your own eye, then you will see well enough to deal with the speck in your friend's eye. Don't waste what is holy on people who are unholy. Don't throw your pearls to pigs. They will trample the pearls, then turn and attack you. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. You parents, if your children ask for a loaf of bread, do you give them a stone instead? Or if they ask for a fish... Do you give them a snake? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give good gifts to those who ask Him? Do to others what you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the Law and the Prophets. 
You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad, and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few will ever find it. Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep, but are really vicious wolves. You can identify them by their fruit, that is, by the way they act. Can you pick grapes from a thorn bush or figs from thistles? A good tree produces good fruit, and a bad tree produces bad fruit. A good tree can't produce bad fruit, and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is chopped down and thrown into the fire. Yes, just as you can identify a tree by its fruit, so you can identify people by their actions. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. Anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching. For he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. And now may our Lord, the great teacher, give his blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. This is the essence of all that is taught in the Law and the Prophets. That's from verse 12. The essence of all that is taught, yet only a few seem to find it, and only one truly lived it. He is the door through which we must pass in order for that kind of life to be possible for us. Verse 14, the gateway to life is very narrow, and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Unless we die to our own efforts and come to Jesus for that life, we will miss the kingdom entirely. The road is difficult because it requires us to die to our own selfish way of life. That's why few ever find it. He is the gate into that kingdom life. Living a life where we are doing unto others what we would like them to do to us is the work of God in our life. It's the gospel, the spirit of Christ transforming our very character. And that is a gift from God. It's not something earned or strived for or sweated out to obtain. As children, we are to trust our good Father. He won't give us a snake if we ask for a fish. He knows how to give good gifts that get to the essence of our very life. He's good. He gives good gifts to his children. In light of how good he is, we seek, we knock, we pursue with all our heart. We participate with his good life, and we experience his heart. And then good fruit happens. It just does because that's what good trees do. We are able to live the way that we were intended to live. So may God open our eyes by his Spirit to reveal to us the very essence of who we are. We are alive in him. We are his children. Our life is found in him. He is our father. And his life in us will bear good fruit. Let's live with eyes open to what our good father has done for us in Christ. And let us rejoice in who we have become in him. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, my daughter is my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. 
Let's continue now in a time of prayer. Feel free to read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast and meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. And where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again, friends, for joining me here at the DRB for this time in the Scriptures and in prayer. Soul work, my friends, you have invested into your soul. And that takes time, doesn't it? takes time, takes consistency, but it also takes, probably most of all, grace. That's right, we got to extend a little grace to ourselves. And you'd be surprised when you do that, how that grace begins to move beyond yourself and into the lives of those that you love. That grace finds its way into all kinds of places in your life, in your world. And that is such a good thing. Grace has that yeast-like effect. It just grows and multiplies and shows up. And oh, how this world needs some more grace. Grace has been given to us, my friend. May we learn how to live in the light of it. Well, what do you say tomorrow? We show up and learn the ways of grace a little bit more tomorrow. Heather will be at the helm, and I know it's going to be good. Until that time, let's go forward. Let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. No doubt about that. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.